two, one. It's time to sit on down and sip the tea with the Root Chat, bringing you tonight's tea of the week. Gossip from the streets, what's trending, and what's cooking at Chit Chat Chew. Three, two, one. This is the Group Chat with your host, the Travis Webb. Darius Williams, Troy Gaston, and Joy Sloan. <laughs> What's up, guys? It is the one, the only represent Big Guitar, Second it all, the boss of the world. It is me, Travis Well, and welcome to the group chat. <laughs> hey, wow. hey. What's going on, Mr. Williams? Hi, Travis. Hi, everyone. So great to be back another week on the group chat. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And Mr. Gaskins, how are you doing? How are you doing? What's going on, Travis? Nothing major. You know, just living life, being fabulous. That's all. Oh, God, <laughs> <goodbye. laughs> and welcome back, Mr. George Sloan Jr. How you doing? I am well. Thank you so much. It's good to be back. I missed you all last week. And I we really thought you. he was going to introduce me as Diggling George. But I guess we'll just let that stick with uh, with, with, with Darius. <laughs> Hello. You see, that's why, that's why you don't tell people you're a power top. Because when you tell people you're a power top, they just start acting funny. They start acting different. They start looking at you differently. Uh, oh. oh. Well, I just, want, I just didn't know if I was going to get you know, like, that key. So you was definitely <laughs> there. And so that was. And there is, did you say right. looking or licking? Looking. He said looking. Oh, I thought he said they started licking you different. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. Ain't that what y'all say? This is a family. <laughs> y'all got to stop the madness before it oh. starts. Hold on, I hear George in my microphone. Let me talk about Darius that uh the F the group chat too, child. Just let it go. Let's just keep it moving. <laughs> my, my, my. Darius just so famous. Oh, please, George. <laughs> they said chasing reality kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said kind of put you, you know, <laughs> kind of put you out there, child. You know, you just never know, child. So you just never know who name go come up in it. But it's gonna always be Darius and Somebody else. Somebody else. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. 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 But I was serious. Uh, no, um, George, we do want to send our condolences to your family. Um, I know we joke a lot here, but at the end of the day, we are real friends in real life. We are brothers. So know that us as your family, your brothers, your extended family, that we are praying for you still. You know, most people uh, pray prior to the day of and the day after but let i'm letting you know that we're here if you need us when you need us you know you're nothing but a call away but we're seriously still praying for your family honestly thank you and i appreciate that and thank you all for reaching out sending your condolences and just checking in you know i always tell people you know when someone dies that that piv that pivotal moment really steps in after the burial, right after the funeral, because that's kind of like when everybody go away and kind of go back to life. Um, so I just say thank you all for just staying in touch and reaching out and just making sure I was good, me and my family was good. So I greatly appreciate that, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you so much. No problem. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, I just want to say you listen. It's happy. I'm happy and it's, I'm glad to be back another week here on the group chat. Now, listen, we have a list of things to go through tonight, but I'm just ready to get right into it, guys. Y'all ready? I'm Let's ready. Let's Let's talk about it. Now, y'all know the Ghana bill has been going on for a while now, for like a couple of years. It kind of really surfaced up last year and gained a lot of social media um, attention. As of a couple of days ago, you know, that Ghana passed their bill about basically anti-LGBTQ laws stating that if you do go to Ghana, um, the legislation is, you know, they have extended sentences, you know, um, it went from three years, I think, if you were LGBTQ to five years, um, LGBTQ sex is um, not permitted there. Um, and they, they even went as far as saying that anybody who supports the LGBTQ community or who are standing behind them, who are allies, are also subject to be in prison um, as well. And, you know, 
just so much has been happening around this. And then, to well, first, I want to get you guys' opinion on that. And then I'll go into the next point about this topic. You know, I'll let Darius go because he's going to be serious. But let me just say this. <laughs> you ain't got the word by me looking at Priceline or uh, none of that to go to, is it Ghana? Mm-hmm. You ain't got word by me. So I'm just going to let you know right there. Um, I, you know, I just think it's crazy. I, I really think it's crazy that in 2024, we cannot live our lives for who we are. And, you know, that's just weird to me. Like, you, y'all are so, I feel like people are so into LGBTQ. It's, you know, it's the only sin in the world. You know, you can, you can be the biggest hoe in the church. You can be all these other things. But if you're gay... Baby, that is it. You going straight, you know, let them tell it. We're going the straight. The pastor can't be doing the whole front row yeah. of um the whole of front mother row and all that. Praise deacon, the the deaconess and all the that. The deacon yes. board, the deaconess board can be doing all that, but he's still going ahead because he's the pastor. But let you be gay. That's the end of the world. I just think we, we're living in times where it's so crazy that people still want control of who we are. And they want, and, and, and over in Ghana, just sounds like they just want to silence them, right? They want to yeah. put them in the closet and keep them quiet. I have no desire to go over there because I'm gay and I am proud, honey. We got any rainbow flags or sparklers at the mall? <laughs> but that is me. I, that's just crazy to me. So I, that's all I'm going to say about that. And that's the best I can do for you, George. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for your donation. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Listen, no, I think that this is like, it's sad and it's unfortunate, but it's also a couple of things. It's one, it is a reminder to us of how good we have it here in the United States, yeah. right? But also a reminder to us of how bad it can be. And when I say that, I'm not just speaking to the LGBTQ plus community. I'm also speaking to other minority and marginalized communities. Because if you think back, the United States was on some don't say gay type shit just a little while ago. Yep. And we can easily make it to a place that, you know, now we're talking about imprisoning people for up to three years if they engage in gay sex. And when it becomes problematic is that we are so divisive as a marginalized people, as people who already have our rights restricted, as people who already know that we can be walking down the street and get gunned down by police, or we can be profiled in a grocery store. As black people, we look at this LGBTQ stuff as a whole black community, like, oh, that's their problem to deal with. And then when you start looking at it like that, next thing you know, now they talk about your abortion rights. And then the next thing you know, they're going to be talking about uh, affirmative action. And so it's a trickle down effect. And I think that as a, a as a minority people, as marginalized people, we got to come together because this is a trick of the enemy. They start to divide us and make us feel like, oh, well, you can be gay, but uh, but women are a little bit better. But then you can be a woman. But if you're black, then whoop, whoop, whoop. But at the end of the day, they don't give a shit about none of us. And so I want y'all to look at this because this is future casting. What is going to be for us if we don't get it together? Because they, they do such a good job of dividing us on issues like this. There's no reason why women should be in a comment section arguing with trans women when both of y'all are dealing with the types of division and the types of impoverishment that we are already dealing with. We should all be banding together on these issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, this is just a sign of things to come in a, in a country like the United States. Watch we regress in the same way that Ghana is if we don't get on the same page. Hmm. Darius, before Travis, before you say anything, I just have to one give you a little one two because oh my god, everything that I have been saying over the past couple of years, whether it's a subliminal tweet, whether it's a post on my Instagram or Facebook, just to get some controversy going on Facebook with people from back home. But I have been saying this, it starts with them using the one thing that everybody they feel like so many people are against, and then trickle down into the individual communities to the because if it's like if the black people hate the gays the most, guess what? We're going to start making gay bills to where right. now black people are now down one group of people to help them vote and help them put anything into in, into law and help them right. put anything, you know, out there. So it's just, I'm, I'm sorry, but that I was literally wanting to scream over here because that is like the point that I've been trying to make all this time. Like, it's going to start, they're going to start with the LGBTQ, and now, like you said, it went from LGBTQ to women not being able to be in control of their bodies. And then it's going to be, again, like you said, a front of action and all of these things that are going to still come against us as a whole community as a whole. So if, just, if you are not a straight white man, you need to be getting on the right team. I'm telling you, if you're not a white supremacist, you need to get on the right team because they're going to keep on stepping on toes until they hit your knuckles. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It's coming. It's very intentional. And just my two cents, you know, it's really sad at the end yeah. of the day. It's yep. very, very sad that we live at a time 
that people can't just love who they love, be with who they want to be with, marry who they want to marry. What's the problem? Like, I, I, you know, I'm looking at this and trying to figure out, like, what's such the problem? Are y'all worried about that the population is going to um, decline because more gay couples are getting married and things of that nature? You guys are afraid that people are not going to want to have kids? Like, what is the problem? Because I don't personally see a problem with that. And I don't, I don't understand why people are so controlling over this community when it, we just want to be loved just like anyone else. And if we happen to love the same sex, then what's the problem? I never understood that. Uh, and I'm never going to get that. So I'm still going to fight for people's rights and make sure that they are being equalized just like anyone else um, will be. Um, it's just sad. It's, yeah. it's, it's really sad. You know, my heart goes out to um, all the Ghana gays. And I'm not saying it'd be funny, but all the Ghana gays. You know, and I feel like some people that's also making those bills are probably also gay and they're not leaving their true authentic self. But, you know, just shout out to all the Ghana gays and the hashtag y'all put Ghana gays, you know. Ghana gays. It's a lot, it must be a lot of people in Ghana. Honest, hashtag Ghana gays. There's a lot of gay people in Ghana. Ghana is upset about it. Um, shout out to the girls over there. Y'all keep on shouting. That's at the end of the day. Well, I want to say this too, because um, I... I... <laughs> George, pull it together for me. I'm, I'm just, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so, uh, but I do want to say for me, it always seems like it's not even the whole LGBTQ community. It's two men. As soon as they see two men together, it be a problem. I, it, I, you rarely hear this issue when it comes to two women being together. You rarely right. hear about this, you know, when they think that, or when, when a trans woman is, I, I don't like to use the word passable, but when a trans woman is passable and it's a guy dating her, you don't hear that. But anytime it's two men together, it seems like it is an uproar in these streets. And I truly hate that. But outside of that, um, today it came out that Ghana um, Finance Ministry has basically warned the country um, that it stands to lose a substantial, a substantial amount of money up to $3.4 billion over the next couple of years if the president signs this lgbtq this bill it has already passed through like i guess their legislation or whatever and he has to finish off on it but yes it's saying that they will lose so much money and now they're trying to rethink or trying to go back in and probably tweak what you know what comes with it but it's like hit them where it hurt if they got to take their money away from them because now that starts to look at other international countries that do support lgbtq and um that yeah, that support LGBTQ, and then they're trying to still fund a country that does it. It's not going to work. So yeah, but and, and to say to that, that and that's what kind of pisses me off, right? That's where the pissed off come in for me because it's like, is this a religion thing or is it money is the root of all evil, right? Because mm -hmm. now, like you just said, Troy, hit away it hurts. Oh, we're going to lose money, right? Oh, well, let us kind of back track this and let us now relook at this right that's just crazy to me so that's that goes to show you they just over there and i mean this so respectfully beep it out but they over there making up sound like it basically okay. point blank here because now we're going back to we want to we gonna lose money and then we can now we want to take the bill back and look i mean just think about it ghana and the ghana gays it's just not a few of them <laughs> right it's, not it's a just lot. not a few of them so just imagine what the sales in the jailhouses will look like. Because I'll tell you right now, baby, if I was over there, I would probably have life, hard labor. I'm just going to call it out. If they trying to impersonate these people for having sex with same sex. Like, that's yeah. crazy to me. But like Because I would go to jail and get out and then go back again. Because no, I'm, baby, they would give me life. Because I'm going <laughs> to let know right then and there. Give me these three years, but I would be in there knocking it out. Okay. <laughs> How do you want this to work? You want me to just hold up space? Or you want to just let me free. But on a serious note, it's crazy that now we're talking about taking away money. Now y'all want to go back and look at it and see what we can do. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really like just a, a trend. Like that's how it happens. Even if you think back to Atlanta a few years ago, Atlanta was supposed to host the All-Star game for, with the uh, MLB and uh, the Major League Baseball Association. I don't know if y'all remember, they pulled out of hosting in Atlanta because of um, Brian Kemp signing that it was some restrictive voting rights law that people couldn't do, like people couldn't bring food or water in the lines. And they had all these laws about the exact match with the signatures and all those things. And Atlanta ended up losing, I think it was like, was it $55 billion? Something like we stood to lose um, $65 million. And they ended up taking that game to Cleveland. But that's how it works in politics. Like, uh, if you say you're going to support some stuff that we're not supporting, then I'm not going to bring my finances to your city. And I think that that's something that does speak. When people don't understand your heart, 
and if people don't understand your plight, you make them understand your pockets. And yeah. I applaud them for, you know, making it plain in this way. But, you know, studies have proven that companies are more reputable. Entities are more reputable when they have diverse representation, Absolutely. when they are supportive of the people who are a part of the organization than a part, the citizens of the, you know, the places. And people know this, but they just don't care. All they care about themselves. So you got to hit them where that hurts. And most of the times that's in their pockets, especially for a, like a government entity, like a country. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, again, we're praying for the Ghana gays. I'm sorry, you guys, that I had to laugh because Travis would be the one that say that. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, hashtag Ghana gays in the comments. But no, honestly, we do stand with Ghana and we do hope that um, with them hitting at, taking their money or taking funding away from them, that this does put a change in the legislation. Oh. So, but we're going to go right on to the next topic. Oh, Darius, I'm going to need a uh, media talking class from you because I you just be, it just be so effortless and just flowing. Troy, I told you about talking to me like this in front of your boyfriend. Darius, <laughs> <laughs> please. Anyway. You're going to have to so stop. I, done met the young man. I, really, I really like that young man. You're going to have to stop this story. <laughs> Anyway, going on to the next topic. So, <laughs> Michelle Williams did a, a promotion and or a commercial for Uber. And, um, you know, in the commercial, she said that she was a Destiny Child member that no one recognized. And the, before I'm going to say this before we do it, it was a little cringe for me. But let's watch the commercial and then we're going to chat about it. Okay, okay. My Uber One membership savings don't disappoint. You know what is disappointing? I was in one of the most iconic girl groups and no one recognizes me. <laughs> Michelle! Michelle, you spit that out! Hmm? Naughty Michelle! Michelle, naughty! Who calls their dog Michelle? Sorry, but are you Michelle Williams? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Drop your wallet. At least my Uber One savings don't disappoint. I'll take you anywhere, Michelle. Whoa, my girl get her check. That's all I can worry about. She's getting her Uber One coin, and that is <laughs> it is what it is. But I want Michelle to know, like, she is an icon. I don't know what made, I don't know what kind of money made her sign on that line to do this commercial. But Michelle, girl, we know exactly who you are, girl, because you give us the bridges that we cannot forget. So don't feel like you're uh, you're, you're forgotten, baby, because you're not forgotten. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. And I'm going to stand firm on this. I have been preaching this for years with Destiny Child. I think Beyonce has a great voice. I think um, Kelly has a great voice. Michelle's voice is very unique. When you hear Beyonce voice, when you hear Kelly voice, and I mean that so respectfully, there are so many people in the world that can sing like them, right? I, yeah, they have tone, they have range. But when you look, listen to the uniqueness of Michelle's voice in this whole group, it's amazing. So, I, I mean, maybe the check was big enough for her to sign. We have to, uh, uh, we also understand this is entertainment, this is television, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. So, maybe the check was just right. I mean, it all, it's also a smart move on her, right? She got what she was looking for on social media because I saw people going in on just this commercial, like, girl, you're known for the bridges, girl, you're known for the uniqueness, you're known for this and that. So, yeah. I mean, it could have been just a smart move on her end, but I've been saying that for years, Michelle. Hands down, I believe, out of the group, she had the most uniqueness in her voice out of Destiny Child. And I'm going to stand on that. Troy, back to you. Give my pride. No. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm saying this because I'm being honest because we're just in the spirit of being honest. Don't okay? piss me off, Travis. Please I don't feel piss like me Michelle off. came up with that script. She gave it to Uber One. They agreed to it because they thought it was some truth behind it. And Michelle believed that there's some truth behind it. I love Michelle. She has some of the greatest bridges, but let's be honest. She is not the it girl of Destiny's Child, okay? And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful because I like her. I just really like Michelle in real life. Um, but she's not the it girl of Destiny's Child. I feel like she became the it girl when she went solo and she started talking about Jesus says yes, can't nobody say no. And just like I'm comparing her, don't be... When we think of Destiny Child, we don't think of Michelle Williams. We think of Beyonce automatically. When we think of the Real Housewives of Atlanta... No, we, I think of Kelly. We think... Excuse me. And I, I think Kelly in her short bob. Okay, but time. that that even proves my Michelle. point. So that speak proves, for well, wait a minute, Travis. wait a minute. Let me get my point across. Well, get it out. I don't know if it's coming across. You know, get it out. I'm gonna get it out when I feel like it. Because you're not. Any, we don't think about you when we bring up the group chat. And we don't think about you neither. Mm. 
That's not what the comments say. Uh, the credits definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anywho, Anywho. Um, Troy. Carry on. <laughs> Anyway, Troy, just like you just said, you think of Kelly. Nobody said they think of Michelle. When we think of the Clark sisters, we don't think of Jackie Clark. And I like Jackie Clark. But let's be honest, we don't think about these people. And I understood what she was saying because a lot of times in a lot of these groups, some people don't realize that they feel like the underdogs, quote unquote, is somebody they don't really just care for. They're just there. When you think of SWV, you think of Coco. You don't think about the other two. When you think of all these groups, it's always got the like this. Um, the head artist or the 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 what's they call it the group leader or whatever you call it. We don't think about Michelle. The end of the day, I'm just being honest. You know, before I this just, ain't got this ain't got nothing to do with this. Hold on, there, real quick. Okay, this ain't got nothing to do with this. But it's crazy honest. how Candy is the richest, and when you think about the skate, everybody always think about Tamika. And I ain't talk about Tiny. Anyway, because Candy's not the it girl of Escape, even though she may have more money than all of them combined, I'm pretty sure. But we don't think of Candy when we think of Escape. We don't think about every band wants a woman. We don't think about that. We think about the girls of the group that can actually sing. And I'm not saying that Michelle can't sing, but I'm talking about when we're talking about Escape. We don't think of Candy and putting her with singing. We put her with songwriting. She is a great songwriter. We don't think of her as a singer. Yeah, I, I just have to disagree. Go ahead, Derek. Yeah, I'm gonna, I disagree with all of y'all, actually, because I'm looking at this from another vantage point. Michelle just popped onto our TV screens, beat to the gods, hair bone straight, dressed. And if y'all think about it, she's now doing a commercial for the one of the fastest growing technology companies in the world. Everybody got Uber on their phone. Just a few years ago, y'all might remember that uh, there was this hashtag going around, poor Michelle, hashtag poor Michelle. Poor, uh, poor Michelle is playing in our faces, okay? Because at the end of the day, she is the topic of conversation. Everyone knows who Michelle Williams is. This is pure satire. It's like, all oh, poor me, bitch, as I go and cash this Uber check because y'all know that she got a grip off of this commercial. So we're all looking at it like, oh, this is cringe. I hope Michelle doesn't really think this of herself. Michelle is playing in everybody's face. Like, y'all talk about poor me. I'm on a commercial for Uber and y'all at home. So well, what's going on? Well, Darius, that's just what I said. Were you not listening? I mean, you were saying so you the part that I disagree you with you on, George. With all of us, but you just said exactly the part what that I, I disagree with you on is I don't think that that's Michelle's self image of herself. I don't think that she genuinely thinks that of herself. I, I do agree that. with the rest of the statement, but I don't think that Michelle thinks like, oh, poor Michelle. I think this is a clap back to everybody who continues to hashtag poor Michelle. Yeah, Darius. Um, Travis said that. Um, Michelle think that about herself. Darius. I mean, George didn't say that. What did I don't think say? she would say that. Because first that. of all, if you gonna be a hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, if you gonna be on this panel and you gonna show up for work, I want you to show up for work. Don't I be here work, getting baby. in and out of what I you want to hear, and then you try to give a summary of what everybody's George. saying, and you. Wrong. I just worked at George. You were the last it. one to sign. You can be the first I one to go. Well, oh. you were just talking <laughs> about that conversation. <laughs> Let's ask them what they think about that. Oh. And on that note, we're going to go right on over to the next. Uh, yeah. Let's move we it on. on. Because we're going right to the next topic. Um, so this next topic now. Yeah, you better braid it. As we know, <laughs> as we know, Oprah has up. always, George, who just, that oh. wasn't even me. That's how I got pulled into that. I ain't even saying that. There is, not tonight. We're going to be respectful with his drunk ass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we all know that, that Oprah has uh, has been a part of Weight Watchers for so long, and you know what she has always been saying that she's trying to get her you know her weight in order and all these things. And recently, it came out that Oprah was um she left the panel, and um I want to I guess the corporate of Weight Watchers because she said that she had been losing, using, sorry, using medicine. <laughs> what she got to do with? That's not Oprah. <laughs> using medicine to <laughs> lose weight. And of course, the uh, medicine she has been using is Ozempic. But however, allegedly, however, you know, I agree with her leaving Weight Watchers because it's just like, you can't be spreading false narratives, girl. If you ain't out here losing the weight naturally and by eating good, girl, you shooting it up. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but yeah, step on off the board because it's not for you no more, babe. Bye. Bye. Stop. This is Shoot why I believe. This is 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 why I believe Monique when it comes down to this individual person, because you done lied since the color purple about your weight loss journey, and the whole time you was on Adipex. Now you doing shots in your belly. You just been eating down, girl. So now you want us to sit here and believe. Uh, 
Girl, goodbye. Good night. Good night. Uh, the only thing that got her still here is her money. And her, like Lenny said, in her last name. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm just so over. You know what? I'm just so over her. And the more and more you hear these stories about her, like growing up, Oprah was like, for little black girls and little black boys, Oprah was like, oh my gosh, she's the richest black woman in the world. Like, this is who I inspired to look up to. This, but then when you start hearing all these stories, okay, one person saying, and uh, two people saying, and uh, three people come out, and more people start coming out saying these same damn things. Girl, some ain't right in the buttermilk. You, you right, George. You've been lying to us all season, all this time, since the color purple. You've been lying about your weight. And now you publicly, I broke that word down. That's the cup. <laughs> now you know, came out and said you leaving Weight Watchers because you use other prescription drugs to help you lose weight. No, you left Weight Watchers because you know that shit was coming out. And so to protect your character, you went ahead and tried to jump on it before it hit the fan. And let's just stand on that. Goodbye. Good night. Mm -hmm. And we will tuck you in. There well, in the process of us no. tucking Oprah in, I'm actually going to wake her back up and get her out the bed because, you know, <laughs> I'm on, it's no secret. You know, I've been on this weight loss journey for years. You know, I lose weight. They gain, lose, lose, gain, gain, lose, lose. And now I don't lost 48 pounds because I'm also on the exhibit. And I've tried everything. Yes, I've 48 tried, weight mothers. Listen, I've tried everything. I tried the melatonin. I tried the exercise. I tried the diet. I tried Fetamine. I tried all these things and nothing worked for me. But Ozempic worked. Tried melatonin for, I tried melatonin because you put me to sleep. So when I'm hungry, I just, I just take a sleeping pill so I go to bed so I won't think about food. Oh my God, Trey. That girl you know? is an addict. But you know, Ozempic, <laughs> it worked. It, I'm not going to lie. That, Ozempic, I don't know what is in that drug. I don't care at this point. All I know, I'm 48 pounds since November down on that. I don't exercise with the pill, with the shots. I like shoot myself every week on Wednesday nights. Um, so I'm all here for Oprah for taking the Zipic, um shots. And it not only makes you lose weight, but it gets your blood um, pressure under control, gets your sugar levels under control. It really helps out a lot of things. And I think whoever created the creator of Ozempic, thank you very much. And we appreciate your services. And, and you know, I get what you're saying, um, George, in regards to she leaving, trying to catch hold or two. But hey, if you're losing all this weight and you know damn well Weight Watchers ain't doing it, go ahead and leave and be honest to the people. That's right. That's right. Be and, honest and to the people. You know damn right, well Denny Craig ain't working for you. Them little cups ain't That's working right. for you. Them milkshakes ain't working for you. If you know that you're using Ozempic, go over to Ozempic and sponsor them yeah, and be one of the after. That's right. And that's and, what I'm doing. And you know what the real issue is, Travis, in this whole situation? Because I like I apply anyone who is, you know, taking the steps they need to take to do what they need to do to feel the way that they want to feel, to look the way that they want to look, to whatever it is that you want to do. But the real issue is, what did we talk about earlier? The issue is always the money. And what do you think is happening to Weight Watchers as a company as people are discovering what they can accomplish with a drug like Ozempic? Weight Bank Watchers drug, is chapter probably 7, chapter 13, owing, chapter 11. Exactly. They are losing money as we speak. And so they might make this seem like some noble thing. This is my real issue. They might try to make this seem like, oh, this is some noble thing. The open is trying to be honest and open. But I'm willing to bet my bottom dollar that Weight Watchers asked Oprah to either not talk about it publicly or once she talked about it publicly, listen, you can't sit over here with us because you are now endorsing our competition. And um, I, I won't be surprised if Weight Watcher goes bankrupt in the next two to five years. But hey, is it me? Or I didn't even know Weight Watchers was still in business. Okay. <laughs> like, I, know. I didn't even know Weight Watchers was still in business. I was like, girl, y'all still you, selling packets of food? But you know, um, my girl, um, what's my girl name? Um, Nisha. Nisha, Nisha uh -huh. had got a deal with Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers after she did the uh, salad thing in. That's right. You know, up north. Yeah. So has she lost any weight since I'm not being funny. I'm just asking questions. Has she lost? I haven't it? seen her. It's like oh. after the whole "It's a Chicken Salad" was. You know, that went for about a couple of weeks. I have y'all seen her since? Yeah, well, I, 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 her, I, and I, I had a chance to catch up with her on my other uh, on my other show on the mix, and she did tell us that it's been tough. It's been rough since like going viral to just kind of make money and remain relevant in in a sense um and that there was a lot of stuff she would have done differently but um yeah, she didn't speak about her weight loss journey or what how effective weight watchers had been for her yeah, yeah i did i did speak with her um too uh because i was supposed to interview her on my show as well but um yeah maybe oh, we got another yeah. show <laughs> <laughs> All things George ain't the only thing going viral on social media babe don't ever forget it george no, let me tell you something. I just got back. 
and I haven't had no issues with none of you all in a week. And I don't want to start anything. I'm tonight. just saying, George, because I'm tired every time I go somewhere, somebody talk about, oh my God, your friend's so funny. I saw your friend video. Woo, 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 woo. So you think you some big shot shit because you be going viral on the internet, George? Oh, okay. Absolutely. Like, girl, give us a platform because um, just because, just like we have other things going, just like you have something else going on outside of here, we do too, babe. Don't ever get it twisted. I can't and help that I just with, wake up. Oh, with that being said. What, what, I, what I do and what I post, I do that in my sleep. <laughs> I can't help when I post it. It just goes, you know, <laughs> like this. I can't help that. I can't and help that's, that. That's, and you know, that's, God, that's, that's God's light on you, and I would never dim your light, George. And well, I'll take off what you just said. Baby, not taking happen. it back, but we're gonna go right on to the next topic. Um, I I don't, I'm trying to understand why you think you leave this every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay. Who are you talking to? Wait, okay. what did you look for? Looking for your contract because I was I was trying to read the fine print. Look for it again, I George. I know yours don't say nothing different than mine, so I'm just trying to see who made you the captain every week. Look for it again, George. Well, George, I am hot, so I do hot topics, babe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be changes next season, so continue. Oh, really? Anyway, <laughs> while George is waiting on those changes, we're going to talk about the now. Um, and in the now, Georgia's mother is arrested as we've seen a viral video going viral on social media of her 12-year-old, which they said is her 8-year-old, hanging out the back of her trunk. Now, I know we... Do we have a video to go with this one? Because I think we do. Oh, let's watch the video and see what it was looking like. That's a line of 12-year-old to me. They're like a baby. Okay. Yes. Mama said that was a 12 year old. And this said the best. I don't was... give a damn if it was a baby, a nine year old, or a 12 year old. Why is the child in the trunk? It looked like they moved, man. It looked like they in she a trunk. She, she said that the trunk, the backseat of her car, her story was the backseat of her car was let down while they were while they were moving. Yes, the backseat of the trunk was let down so it had more room in the back and he was able to crawl out and get air or something along those lines. But this is clearly a mistake because if you knew the church, and, and if it's not a mistake, then you deserve to go to jail. But because, slammer. I mean, slammer, because at the end of the day, you couldn't have known this was going on and have your baby get ready to fall out the back of your trunk on the highway. I'm sorry. There's well, you no know, way you knew things, that. Two things for me here. First, that is a baby, okay? And that looks like a child that should be trapped in a car seat. I'm not, And you can tell by the head, okay? Because I had a big yeah. head, I was a kid. A big head and big eyes. There is no way that you had was both seats and, and refresh my memory. But if that's a what kind of car is that? A Dodge? It looked like a Challenger. A, a Challenger, right? It looked like a Challenger. So the Challenger. seat would then be down all the way across. All the way one, across. Right? It went let down mm -hmm. one and two. That's right. That's not adding up, girl. So you may well go ahead and get your books ready and get to begging because you're going to jail. You need to be stoned and you need to be in jail. Now, I got to be careful what I say here because they will come after me, okay? So, I'm going to say, allegedly, you need to go to jail and you need to be stoned because there is just no way you... That is a believable story that the back seat was down and the trunk was open. So, if the back seat was down and the trunk was open, why was the baby in the back seat anyway? To crawl Without out no to the trunk. Without no restraint. Where's the car seat? I have mixed opinions about And then about you this. going down 75, doing 80 and a 60. <laughs> rolling. There you go. I have mixed opinions about this one because I'm from the country, right? Girl, and me too, but we ain't never did no shit like that. Listen, okay, we, rolled on, we rolled on the back of trucks. That's what I was gonna, gonna say. We That's exactly what I was gonna say, Troy. And we used to wait for my granddad to get off work every day, and we would wait at the top of the road because we knew what time he was getting off work. We would get on the back of his truck and we would ride around. And in my opinion, this is not much different than that. Now, we're living in much different times, and you probably can't even ride on the back of a truck like that anymore. However, you couldn't ride um, on the back of the truck I, like that back then. They didn't want you when I saw that. this, you said what? They didn't want you riding on the back of the truck. That's like what I'm that saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I, I on one hand, yes, it, it's wrong. It's very wrong, especially on the highway. I would never do this on the highway, but it did give me like some like reminiscent flashbacks of like riding on the back of the truck. Well, Damn. you know, there is, I am Damn. shocked. Yeah, I'm I am shocked too. Shocked at one, you would even correlate the two. Ride on the back of a pickup truck that's designed for people to ride on the back and a two-door car 
with somebody with a child in the trunk blows my mind that you compare those two I am shocked to say this. From this upstanding young man, I'm actually very shocked to hear this from him. And Travis, I would like to hear your opinion. Please don't make it like this. Don't try to cut me off. I know. Don't try to come in and cut me off. Travis ain't even got nothing to say. I do have a lot to say, actually. Thank you very much for speaking for me. But she just started driving. Oh, nam yo ho ye yo, nam yo ho ye yo, nam yo ho ye yo. You're going to need a stronger pet than that, Travis. Nam yo ho ye yo. Okay, I'm sorry, Trav. Go ahead. Thank you. You Anywho, uh-huh. calls Nicole. <laughs> oh, baby, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Anybody can come up here with me, but they will never take my place. So you call Nicole, you call Robert Ray, you can call Markel, you can call uh, who on Atlanta. Let me go down the road with some people for you to call. Who on the show you was on? Troy, Darius, who's on the show y'all was on? You call whoever you want to call up here to substitute. But when I get back, I'm back. Period. Clock it. Look for it, George. Where's that, George? Look for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now sit over over there and drink on that. I'm not yeah, worried about ready. hosting when I'm not here. Uh-huh. I'm worried about how I'm going to give it when I get here. Yeah. And I see you're trying to really give a lot tonight because you was absent last week. We get it. But anyways, to answer <laughs> oh, your question. Oh, I do this every week. Right. And you, that I means you had you a lot to do. say. You had to catch up. I do so. what you can't do. Now go ahead for they mute me. Go ahead now. <laughs> I have to, um, executive, uh, um, can we mute George? Thank you. <laughs> Anywho, like I was saying before, I was brutally interrupted because he forgot who won the EPs. Clack that. Anywho, um, Girl, you barely did. I see both sides too. I'm not going to even lie because there have been plenty of times where we don't back in the day, my daddy had six kids, and I don't know how the hell we fit in a two-door car, but we all squeezed <laughs> in a two-door car, two of us in the front, four of us in the back, and then if we couldn't have no breathing room, we will let that seat down and breathe a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, was it legal to do that? No, but have I done this, and have I been that child, even at three years old? Yes. And I'm just going to be honest, my mama and daddy watching, y'all know I'm telling the truth, we don't do that plenty of times. That's not nothing new. What's new is, Technology is new and people are recording it, and that's what's new. Because if you go back to the early 2000s and the late 90s, you will see a lot of us in them back seats riding them trucks, riding them vans, and riding them to them cars. So I, I ain't don't know never why seen, they trying to light this I woman up. Then I'm not I saying, ain't never seen nobody in the right, right, y'all. I ain't never seen I'm nobody not saying in this. Hold on, I'm not, hold on, hold on, George. I'm not saying she's right because one, you need to be watching your damn child because your child Correct. looks very young. That child could easily fill out that damn car. I'm not Correct. saying she's right, but I'm not saying this ain't so. Strange or not something I never seen before because I grew up from South Carolina. This stuff we used to see in South Carolina, so I can't say she's right. And I'm not saying she's wrong, but I'm not saying that I've, I've seen this before. I was one of them kids too. You probably saw my head back in the '90s looking at everybody what they recorded me too. <laughs> yeah, we would have for just sure. This is big, baby. Just is big. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. This is big. <laughs> ain't never seen nobody riding in the trunk. Ain't nobody in the country. No roads out there casting rides in the river creeks. Ain't never <laughs> seen nobody riding no trunk, no child. I'm sorry. Troy, it's you and I. All of us. It's you and I. It's you and me. We gonna all you go and out. Out. We're going to all go out to the pond one weekend. I'm just going to push straw no, in there. <laughs> y'all, seriously, no. Let's for real. Let's go fishing. I like fishing. I, I, I outfish all of y'all. We, I I'll, thought you we, were the fish. You outfish us already. I thought you were the fish. I am. Can't worry about it. Um. So, <laughs> <laughs> Travis, don't do it. Um. We gonna go right on to the next topic because I'm not trying to touch y'all tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you now y'all know the week wouldn't be right if we didn't have somebody in the Real Housewives of Atlanta spectrum on the board. So listen, tonight we're getting into Peter Thomas and this nine point one million dollar you know default judgment, unpaid rent. I think it's for Bar One down there in South Florida, if I'm not mistaken. And listen, Peter said, "Baby, you just won't get it. You won't see." A, 50 cent, you won't see a dollar, you won't see $20, and your damn show won't see $9.1 million. I ain't paying nothing. And baby, from what I from from what I from what we know, and if you are a follower of Red Housewives of Atlanta, if you were there when him and Cynthia were together, even afterwards, Peter is always behind on some money, some kind of way. Peter done had Cynthia paying for stuff. I think it was it need that all uh, gave him some money at one point too. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> that was somebody else. Yeah, come on. That was somebody else. I'm like, was it Mimi? But either way, Peter has always been wanting people some money, child. And at this point, Peter just said, you know what? I'm going to just 
continue on you because I am not doing it. And child, it's giving it. Peter don't pay this money. He going to jail. That's right. Well, I don't think I he know. first gonna go to jail, and I'm gonna tell you why. Y'all know damn well Peter ain't been paying rent since back in the day when he had these restaurants when he was with Cynthia. So I don't know why y'all keep loaning this man out this money. So <laughs> I'm with Peter. I'm team Patricia and I'm team Peter. Patricia is going to keep on getting all these damn loans, getting all these damn buildings, selling <laughs> this damn food, pocket it, and not paying these people rent. So if y'all want to be dumb and keep on giving all this money to Peter, by all <laughs> means, keep doing it. Peter, I'm team Peter. Peter, go open up another restaurant and get your money. <laughs> I will. <so. laughs> I was going to say, uh... I was gonna say Phaedra might tell a joke, but she ain't gonna tell a lie. But we know Phaedra do both. She'll tell a joke and a lie. But one thing she didn't lie about when she said this man always got 50 limb cases all the way down to the courthouse. <laughs> Baby, one thing Peter gonna do is have a, a doggone lawsuit for some paid, some old back money. I mean, this man is just relentless. Like he just done uh run around town, mess around with, allegedly messing with all the waitresses and they paying his people and they paying the bill. I, Peter, you just scam on scammer, just scam on. See and let me just say this. Let me just say this. Y'all may have thought Cynthia was, you know, running behind Nene and all these other things, but Cynthia wasn't not Cynthia was not no Cynthia was not a damn fool. This cup talking. Baby Cynthia said, <laughs> you know what? Before this, all this, let me just let me come on out of this, okay? Because you got you got 24 cases in Fortune County, okay? <laughs> Cynthia went for that. So Cynthia oh, was you are and let me tell you something. The reason Peter has not failed yet is because every one of those businesses that they are suing, they are suing the LLC, which in a way, to an extent, he is protected personally under those LLCs. So while they're filing and saying, hey, we're going to sue you for this, we're going to sue you for that, they're suing his LLCs. They're suing his companies. And that's what I always tell people. This is why it's important black people that's running business. Get Generate that. your, create your LLC. Because your ass going to be protected on that. So when they come in and sue your ass, they're going to sue that LLC. And then guess what you're going right. to do? You're going to run down there and see your bankruptcy attorney in file, and, chapter, and then, yeah. file chapter 7, file chapter 11. And so while he got that 1.9 million, however much it is, he ain't worried about that because he's going to go right down here and file, file bankruptcy. That bankruptcy. And, and, be, and, come LLC. Court, and he, probably, <laughs> he might get him a couple hundred thousand. If that. Was, but he ain't worried about that. Department of Revenue for another uh, uh, LLC. And, and okay. let me say this. And let me say this while we're on this. And I mean this is a factual fact. I've seen it with my eyes. Our Caucasian Americans who we look at and we feel like they got it going on. And Donald you know, Trump. we see these, you know, these Caucasian Americans that have a business that fail, they're opening up a bit. This is what they do. And yep. it's just now us as African American people, we are just now getting on board. But they've been doing this shit for years. They've been doing this. They'll go buy these big ass houses. We think they live in lavish, they live in nice, mm -hmm. they're in bankruptcy. They're in, yep. they're in foreclosure, but we just now got up on to game. You're Go right. out about you know two point three million dollar house, two or three years in the house, income is not what it is. Oh, I'm gonna file bankruptcy, and that's gonna cut my payment half of what I'm paying. And oh, I don't have to buy nothing for ten years in bankruptcy. I have enough cash flow to buy whatever I want in cash. But see, us as black people, we don't know that we're just now probably a couple years from a couple years ago. We just now getting no game. They've been doing this shit. So that's so why Peter ain't worried about this. And so basically, out. basically go buy my Range Rover tomorrow under my LLC, and then if I can't pay for it in the next couple of years, girl. Well, I now that ain't what I just said. Now because your LLC has to produce income for the loan to be approved. Mm -hmm. Now don't run your ass down there. <laughs> And you ain't say that George said, you know what they're going to say, George said, I can come down here and get me a range, child. I just write it off. <laughs> George, they said that. Nah, please. You somewhere locked up. Uh, you somewhere down. locked up. <laughs> you somewhere <laughs> locked up. <laughs> you can put some money on your JP. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. That, I mean, uh -huh. that was a yeah. clear. <laughs> Dude, so Peter is getting away scot free, is what I hear, basically. Probably so. I mean, he'll probably have to pay something, but it ain't gonna be even. It's gonna be nothing near that because he's gonna file bankruptcy. Yeah, I already know he's gonna file bankruptcy. Look at Trump. That's who it is. Prime example. Look at Donald Blueprint. Trump. Blueprint. Donald Blueprint. Trump has been filing bankruptcy on businesses since the '90s, and people always praise him, thinking he's this amazing businessman. And he is not. He had an airline that went bankruptcy. Like, who, how, does a, how does an airline go bankruptcy? Yeah, bankrupt. You know what I'm saying? And so, prime example: Donald Trump bankruptcy after bankruptcy after bankruptcy, and he's still living this very lavish life, even before he became president. I'm about yeah. to say, and then y'all went and made him y'all president, and about to do it again. 
Mm. Well, we ain't got no choice at this point. At this go round, it's out of our hands. We got um, our hands at the group chat. We're going to be on this. We're going to be here every day, Monday through Friday, having our supporters. We're going to pick them up. Uh, Darius just got a new car. We're going to be picking up supporters in Darius' car and driving and put them in the truck. The <laughs> put them in the truck and have it open. Put them in the yeah. truck, baby, so we can all fit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to the, the polls. Yeah, we better make money off this voting. I'm voting. with that. I'm with that. Okay, y'all are funny as hell. We gonna go right on to the next subject while we're talking about reality TV. Now, of course, the Married to Medicine reunion um is going on right now, and in one of the previews, it showed that Dr. Simone and Kwa were having basically a back and forth, and Simone was just basically saying that she was supporting her and all these things. And as she got ready to speak on something that was very dear to the quad heart, quad tried to stop her and say, you know, look, Simone, don't go there. Don't take it there. But, however, Dr. Simone still took it there. And, you know, let's watch the video real quick. After the Mad Gala, she had an incident, a tragic, at what, her what, home. What was it? Simone. Where her Simone. niece, her great niece, died in her pool. Okay. I reached out to quad because no matter what, we are going through. If you have something that catastrophic to happen, I'm gonna reach out. Okay. <laughs> you know, I have to be honest. Dr. Simone, respectfully, you wrong for that. You should have shut up when you said tragic and then went on to, because I think her intentions was right, but you know, you went too far when you brought her family up. And then you went into detail about her, uh, her niece and then the whole, what happened to her niece, you disrespect for, you wrong for that. You should have shut your carrot cake ass up and you should have left at tragic and then people would have took your side. But in this particular case, this case, you're wrong for that, Dr. Simone. You need to learn when to shut up and when to speak. In this moment, when your friend, if you have somebody that you call your friend telling you, Simone, 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 somebody trying to tell you that and giving you the warning, like, hey, can you stop? And you continue to do it anyways, you dead ass wrong for that. You need to be focused on all the stuff you got going on. You're wrong for that. I think that was very below the belt. I think that was very disgusting and very, very disrespectful to Quad. Regardless of whatever y'all feel about her, I'm on Team Quad on this side. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. You know, this is what I say, and I and I preach this for years. In that very moment, you could you could very clearly see that there was no respect for Quad from Doctor Simone and no loyalty. And I have preached this for years. Once a person fall out with you, they have they have no loyal. They no longer have any loyalty to you. They no longer have any respect for you. So there won't be limits of what they're willing and will not say. And this is one of those prime examples of a friendship that has soured right and so now there is no limits to what i will and will not say even if you're giving me caution not to go there i no longer have that respect for you i no longer have that loyalty to you so it's it's now it's just open field right whatever i say i'm going to say it and this is one of those prime examples i've been preaching that for years once you fall out with a person you cannot expect that person to have any type of respect or compassion for you in any tip in, in, in certain moments or in moments in general because there's no there's no longer no loyalty there, right? I have no loyalty to you, so why do I have to be cognizant of what I say? And that was a prime example in that situation that I've been preaching for years. And That's why for me, I don't have expectations on people because they will you will be disappointed a whole lot. So nothing surprised me about people anymore. And it's just like, are y'all were y'all even really friends though? Because if you can go right. that low below the belt and bring up, you know something that you know that's going to hurt a person. It's just like, hurt people hurt people. So maybe Simone is hurt in a way that we don't know or, you know, whatever. Oh, she's really hurt by her and Kawhi's situation. But at the end of the day, you don't you don't go tit for tat with a person, You especially in that aspect. Like, how she said it, when she said it, after Kawhi even addressed it, said, Simone, don't go there. And it's just like, you still went there and you looked over at Andy as you said it because Andy asked you, well, what was it? You could have just said, I'm just going to leave it at tragedy, but we all know the situation. But instead, you continue to talk about it. And I think yeah. that's the fucked up part. Excuse my yeah. language. No, you're right. You're right. All of y'all are right. And I think that you uh, you hit the nail right on the head. Andy is just as culpable because it ain't like Andy ass didn't know what the hell happened at Quiet House. Mm -hmm. Everybody right. in the world knows what happened. And it's just so toe up for him to even bait that out of Simone because he knew in that moment that Simone would divulge that information. And it wasn't even about me oh i'm acting like i don't know what happened it's so that this will be on camera for this show and i think that's the really disgusting part even for her the way that she said it just like to break it down like oh this happened at quad house and you know in her pool her niece died like <clears throat> excuse me there's also a level of like 
blame that the way with the way you phrased it like oh well this girl died in your pool you know i just don't it just it was so disgusting it was from, yes yeah, yeah. Just, you know, watch it and nobody at any point was like simone uh, the only person that stopped her was quiet like i just feel like at the end of the day if we were ever really friends and i understand what you're saying george about like not expecting loyalty once you fall out but if we were ever really friends anything that i did for you out the kindness of my heart it should have been left at that because Quad could have easily quit back and said, well, when your daddy was lost, I'm the one, not the rest of these girls who your best friend, Jackie, and all the other girls. I'm the one that went on the road with you to help you look for your daddy. But Quad didn't even sit there and say that. And I see that, you know, Simone is on the internet trying to refute that, saying, oh, well, the cameras were there. But she didn't have to do that. Just like you didn't have to call her. And for you to sit there and that's the first thing you want to throw up in her face, trash. Trash. Yeah. And Dr. Simone, this week... We ain't even got no donkey at a week done with, but girl, this week you are a chop because that right there was not cool. And I hate that for her. Okay. And that's right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, we're not even going to spend a lot of time on it. We're going to go right on to the next topic. We already gave our, our, you know, examples and what it is, and it is what it is. Um, So, next topic Dr. Umar and Lil Yachty in his podcast were having a conversation. And during this conversation, you know, Lil Yachty said basically that he felt like. Black women were getting BBLs to keep up with other women and to look like other women. And Dr. Umar said that he felt like Black women were getting BBLs because of other Black men or to keep up with Black men or to want Black men to love them and their body. And uh, I'm kind of in between on both, but let's watch the video and then we're going to chat about it. If I'm a little Black girl and every other music video I turn on, She's half dressed with big breasts and a big ass. And I want a black man to want me and like me. And I probably ain't got no daddy because the white man locked him up or the police killed him off. What am I going to do to be attractive? I'm going to go and get a BBL. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is black men, not just his hip hop. I want to clarify. Black men, period. Professional black men, athletes, everyday brothers, all of us. I don't want to make the hip hop community more responsible, but y'all <laughs> definitely leading the pack in terms of the sexual objectification of the black woman. If hip hop and the black man in general did not sexually objectify the black woman, we would not see the BBLs and physical surgeries that we are seeing from our black women to try to look more attractive. That's on us. I totally disagree. And he sound like a fool. And that's my opinion. And I'm gonna tell you why I disagree. Because he go to the barbershop every other week to get his hair cut, to get his beard trimmed up, to get his face lined up, his edge lined up, right? Because that's what he wants to do with his image. That's what he wants to do. He put on a certain color because that's what he wants to do. That looks good on him. It's their body, it's their choice. So if they want to go and wear lashes, eyelashes, brows, eyebrows, contacts, hair, big brutes, big booties, big thighs, long legs, whatever, they, that's their body. I don't know why we are so caught up in a world where we are so concerned about what other people are doing with their own goddamn bodies. Well, That's the, crazy to me. I want to say this now. I, I'm 50-50. The only reason I'm 50-50 is because, um, yes, people do do this because they want to, but when you have people that came into the, like, women that came into hip-hop, especially in the new generation. For example, of course, I'm going to use this person, but Nicki Minaj said years ago that the reason she came into the game and she got her butt implants and when it got shot, um, booty injections was because she felt like when she was in the studio with Lil Wayne or she was in the studio with the guys, that's what they liked. So for guys to like her, that's why she did it. But however, I'm on the other fence as well, is that I feel like when some one woman sees another girl do it, they like, oh girl, hubby be a cute, oh girl, I want my body like that. So I'm finna go save up my money and get me a BBL. So I cause because I've seen both sides. I've seen both. Yes, yeah, some people are doing this to make themselves feel better. They want to look differently. They want to be, you know, this certain figure. They see them having this what what you call an hourglass shape. But then you have some people that are just like, Oh girl, I'm only doing it because she did it, or I'm doing it because I seen Jada go do it. I'm doing it because I feel like Ari when it got this sucked out of her, sucked out of whatever. So I'm gonna go do it too. So yes, I do agree, but I do I think it's mostly them doing it for men? No. But I do feel like some women have done it for men. Yes. You know, my only two cents in regards to this, I agree with Troy saying. I also understand what you saying too, George. I honestly think is what we see on social media, what we see in these music videos, what we see on television. 
it's this image that we think is perfect and this is the perfect image so if i gotta go get veneers to feel that i'm perfect or i gotta get a big booty or big breast and get my stomach sucked in to feel beautiful or to feel like i'm normal or to feel like i'm perfect or to kind of duplicate what i see on tv then i'm gonna do it so i can't just put black men and say the black men are responsible for it. i think everybody kind of plays a role into this because this is based what we see and this is based on the images that we think is perfect so that's my only two cents in regards to that i don't think it's all black men fault in regards to that so i don't know yeah. what dr johnson i don't know his doctoral degree is even real um anyway so i never really agreed with him so i don't know why he's trying to put on the black man yeah you know we don't know if he was like, i can imagine what he would say about the gays <laughs> okay <laughs> he always got something to say just right. take a second to go i don't on. watch him so i don't, I don't either and that's what i'm saying. i think it's innately like misogynistic to insinuate that men determine what women do to their bodies However, I do understand how socialization works. And I do understand that a lot of that is about standards of beauty that have been created by what young girls, as he said, see in the media. Um, I talk about that a lot with like writing children's books for black children. Like that does affect your overall view of what it is that you can achieve, your self-efficacy, your self-esteem. So I understand the sentiment. Um, I wish it came from a different messenger. Um, and I wish that the message was a little more uh, palatable. but at the end of the day, there is a level of responsibility that hip hop culture has for the imagery that we see as the standard of beauty, especially in the black community. So I do agree with that part. My, my, my. My, my, my. Well, if uh, all hearts and minds are clear on that, because listen, at the end of the day, it's your body, girl. It's your body. <laughs> you can do what you want to do with it. Like, do what she want to do. I guarantee you, he done went into a barbershop and said, I want that cut right there. But did yeah. he do it because did he do because it? Because he cut on somebody else. Like but I just, that just really irks the shit out of me. But how much of that do we do to feel attractive? You know, to feel like we we look good. You know, like what the first thing y'all want to do when y'all get a haircut? I know George, you like if if I text you like, hey, let's go somewhere. You ain't got no haircut, baby. We, we not going. I mean, we not going. going. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> and it's because of how you feel about. Do you think you're ugly? Yeah. Or do you like these people ain't gonna see me looking like this? But yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think other I think, it, I don't think other people motivate that for me. I know what I want me, I know what I want me to look like when I go out. I know how I want my clothes to fit when I go out. I know, I, listen, it is no secret, and I've been very public, uh, 2020, no, 2018, 2019, maybe, I had lipo. I had my stomach sucked the hell out, right? Oh. It's not. And I, it's, it's nothing for me to be embarrassed about or right. to be proud about. I was very open with the fact that I had lipo because I knew how I wanted my clothes to fit on me. I didn't care about what this person looked like, what people on TV looked like, what people on social media looked like. I didn't care about that because if I was so concerned about that, maybe I'd be sitting over here with a six pack abs, big ass chest and all that. No, but I knew what I wanted me to look like. So, mm -hmm. and I guess to each his own, but I was never motivated by seeing someone else do it and then said, let me go and do it. I, I, I was never motivated, it, George. I, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to push back on it just a little bit. I feel like the image of what you want yourself to look like, that came from somewhere, whether explicit or implicit, just based off of the it things that from we've been told, the things that we've been told look good, the things that we've been shown as like the standards of beauty. And I, I agree with you completely. That could be just about like yours. For myself, this is what I want to look like. But that came from somewhere. That is a socialization that we've gotten from different things that we've taken in over time. Yes, there's like, I, I like, do, like somebody I, making a little make, do, making a little jab at you when you was in elementary school. No, you know, like I, I wasn't. I or, have to disagree with you there. Okay, my my reasoning for having liposuction was not caused by nothing other of seeing other people with the flat stomach. I knew how I wanted to look. I was tired of going to the damn gym, not seeing results. I was just like, you know what? Forget it. I'm about to take the easy way out, child. Let me just lay on the table because I knew when I put on a suit or when I put on a shirt, I wanted my damn stomach to be flat. That's what I wanted. Nothing around me motivated that because if something around me would have been a motivation, I would have had lipo child a long time ago. <laughs> but I decided <laughs> not to because I was like, oh, I'm going to get in the gym. You know, I'm about to work it out, baby. My stomach was looking at me, and I was looking back at it like, what we doing here? What we doing yeah. here? And so finally, I made the decision. And let me tell you, 
my decision, I didn't even know I was so clueless to lipo or lipo suction that I had to research it like what it is and what you know what's the effects and what's the aftermath, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing was presented to me to say, or I didn't see anybody to say, oh, I want this look. It was just something I decided to do for myself. And well, okay, and, and I'll take that. And Darius, but I will say, just to speak on Darius before we go to the next topic, Darius, I think what you said, sometimes we see things and it does make us want to do it because I, I'll be out here in the world sometimes and be like, oh, girl, that girl teeth is tea. I'm going to get my, oh, I want to get my teeth done. Or, oh, she done got the little things stuck from under her eyes to where she ain't got no bad stuff. I'm going to go get that. Oh, girl, they're going to give me some Botox in my forehead because I don't want my little wrinkles there. Like, so I think sometimes I you do see because you do feel like certain people are attracted, even though you do could be with someone, but you can see people being attracted or saying this person looks super, super good because they have all this stuff done to themselves. And it's just like, I think it also comes with a level, like for me, I had to learn how to love me as a whole and want to be like, okay, you look good like this. So even if you do do something, it's not about the next person. So Correct. there is not, yeah. I, I, that's what I, 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 I would never say that I'm doing it for the, like, I'm not saying you're doing it for the next person, but I'm saying that those slight insecurities that we feel about certain features, those are rooted in something, and that's what's being fed to us by media. That's what's socially acceptable, is what's prevalent, is what people consider attractive. That's where those insecurities come from. A baby doesn't wake up one day and say, oh, I got bags under my eyes. A baby doesn't wake up one day and say, oh, my teeth not straight enough or my stomach to be. A child is not doing that. It's at some point that we are socialized to see ourselves in these ways. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to make enhancements because I think we all have insecurities and we all have enhancements that we want to make. But I just wanted to say that from a psychological standpoint, that is called socialization and that comes from somewhere. Whether it's something that someone says explicitly or whether it's something that we just see consistently, like there are you know notions that we gain about ourselves and that's all informed by our worldview. Yeah, well... We're going to go on to the next topic. I actually like that. But for our last topic of the evening, and girl, like again, girl, this y'all body, do what you want to. Um, <laughs> but the last topic of the night, and just to lighten the mood really quick, well, this probably going to amp the girls back up. But would you <laughs> send someone $100 that you're dating something that for, for lunch? Not somebody that you've been in a relationship with, not you know, somebody you've been with all these years, but someone that you are trying to date. And before we watch this video really quick, I'm going to say this. I don't need $100 for no damn lunch. Send me $25, $30 to get whatever I'm going to get out of the mall if I'm working in the mall. Or if I'm out and about throughout the day and I'm by myself, send me $50. But I don't need no $100 to go to lunch. $50? How do you go from $20 to $50? If, if, I'm, if I'm off from work and I'm outside somewhere, you can send me $50 to do whatever. But like, unless I'm going to like... <laughs> Restaurant, restaurant status, but still, I wouldn't be trying to grope nobody to be sending me all this money for some lunch when we ain't a full thing. That's just not me. I'm not. I'm not money hungry, baby. I got my own. Sorry. That first of all, that is crazy, and y'all know how passionate I am about money. I ain't, let me tell you, I ain't finna send you twenty. I'm not finna send you fifty. I'm not finna send you a hundred. Who sends somebody a hundred damn dollars for lunch? Your lunch break ain't nothing but an hour. What the hell you finna buy with a hundred dollars? And some of y'all only got thirty minutes. So what you go buy with a hundred dollars? Now give or take, depending on the day, okay, and how I'm feeling. And there has been times I, you know, with my partner, child, listen, are you hungry? I'm about to, I'm about to overeat to me something. Do you want some? You know, something like that. But I'm not gonna just pull out my Apple Pay, my Cash App, my Venmo, my Zelle, my however you want me to send it, and send you know lunch money. That is just crazy. What does that? That's crazy to me. What does that signify? That I'm taking care of you because I'm going to send you some lunch money? Is that okay, what that I, signifies? I think you missed the point because, babe, we say if, they, if you are dating, because now in this relationship over here, you're going to send me some lunch money maybe here and there, maybe sporadically. You ain't got to do it every day. But if we are just dating and trying to get to know each other and you talking about something you're expecting hundreds of dollars from me to go eat on your lunch break, girl, go find somebody else. I'm not doing it. You sending me. You go send me. What the hell you sending? See, much is given as much is required. So if you want me to send you $20 here and there, I want the same thing in return. I don't care if you the top, you the bottom. We, I want the same thing in return. Because at the end of the day, guess what? We're both men. And if that's what you want to feel and you want to be catered to and you want $20 once a week, guess what the hell I want? 
twenty dollars. But this is about a walk. So what, being that it's a what's woman, the nickel sound. I want the same thing in return. I so, just think we we we've gotten to a place in relationships where we are. Did they cut me out? Oh, I'm sitting here. We done gotten to a place. <laughs> <laughs> we done got to a place in relationships where we have made them so complicated to date. We have taken we have taken away, you know, normalizing. Is that a word? This red yes. cup talking. That's a word, right? It is, brother. We have taken we we are taking away just dating. Like we have these these expectations that are to the moon and back. And the half of the shit that you got on your list. You ain't even got. It. So how do you expect for all of this from this person, and you can't even give none of that? And that's some factual fact. That's some real shit. We have gotten to a place where we have just overlived dating. Like we have taken it completely out of content. And you know why? Social media plays a lot of this shit. And I stand on it. Valentine's Day. Get on social media. You got motherfuckers. A hundred balloons in the house. A hundred balloons in the house. Three or four hundred dollars worth of roses. <laughs> now think about that. Think well, about why it. We, well, why we think about it? Three hundred dollars worth of roses. I have one day. <laughs> give, give me some feedback, there. Give me something. Okay. <laughs> what you got? You ain't got nothing. I'm gonna take it. I'm I'm the one that's single, so I'm gonna take advice from the uh, from the people in relationships tonight. Okay. Well, 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 advice, advice, I think go stay single. I think in a, in a relationship because I may see it. I may send my boyfriend money. or I send him a little fifty dollars here and there, or a hundred dollars if he if he out flying and whatever. He's like, oh, he about to go out. And I may say, oh, when well, he go your food on me, you can buy your drinks. And he go some drinks on me. Da 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 da. But yes, I do that because we're in a relationship. But as far as dating, no, you that's not your man. Thank you, Troy. This is what now, Troy. This is what we become friends. Now we yeah. can hang out outside the show because <laughs> now we're in line here. Go ahead, Travis. I'm gonna give it to you. Go ahead, Travis. Well, there no, but I will <laughs> go ahead, Travis. I'm sorry. What I will say is, and I'm I get what everybody's saying. Do but you? I think it I do. And if you allow me to say the reason why I do, then you will understand why I say I do. The floor do is yours. Anywho, like I was saying, if I was really interrupted. Um, I would say it kind of depends on your tax bracket. I'm just going to be honest because I have been in situationships or even in the process of dating somebody and they have sent me $100 for lunch. And you got to also think about it. Where you going to lunch? Okay, maybe you want to go to Ruth Chris for a day. You know you can't go to Ruth Chris with $13 because you're going to be looking crazy drinking that cup of water that they're going to send you with them $13. So I really think it kind of based on what tax bracket that you're in and also who you're dating. And some people like to put on when they first meet somebody. So if you know you really want somebody and you see them $100, you know that's going to make them open their legs and lay it low and spread it wide. Then who business? If you got the $100 to spare and if you want to spend your money on the person that you're dating, even if you're not in a relationship, that is your business because at the end of the day, it's your pocket so i get what everybody's saying but at the end of the day it's not my money it's not your money whoever money they want to spend it on let them spend it on who are we who are we okay wait a minute who are we to tell somebody that they can't send a hundred dollars on there you stop the next man and don't do that mm. that and that's what i okay travis so i i feel comfortable now sharing i will say that like oh who does? I mean, we all have money to pay for our own lunch, right? We all got the money to do it. And someone sending you money for lunch is not about you actually getting your lunch because you can get your lunch. I mean, we're all gainfully employed on this chat. You know, we got our own money, but it's about impressing that person. And so if you're going to send some money, send some money. That's okay. all I'm saying. If you're going to send some money, send some money. And, and we also have to look at, you know. But. I will be grateful. I will say that I'm not gonna be like, oh, this man sent me twenty dollars and I want, but, but I would be, I would be grateful if you send me anything. I would be grateful. But if you are gonna send some money and trying to impress me to jump ball, let's play. Okay. Jump ball. And, and, and one thing I know about Darius, he will be grateful because I've been out several times with Darius, and, and you know he got us drinks. Now how he got them, I don't know what he did from. I don't know with that hundred dollar lunch money. I don't know if it was even for that. But what I would say is this. How you started is how your ass got to finish it. That's so right. If you're trying to impress somebody with a hundred dollar lunch ticket every day or every week or whenever the case, you got to continue that on. Now, don't wait till you get in a full fledged relationship and realize financially you can't keep up with this person. Because let me tell you something: you started, that's the bed your ass right. made. Lay in it. Good night, right, George. And then I you want to touch on. I want to touch on one 
just one more point, George. I want to touch on what he said. He said, you don't, you don't care if you're a top, bottom, verse, all that stuff. But I just want to appeal to the tops. If your man got to sit up there and spend an hour in the shower to get ready for a uh, happy time with you every day, the least you can do is uh, spend out a little bit more money than he is. And that's just how I feel about that. That is crazy. If your and man you know got what? There is. Is. And there nobody, is. you decided that. No. You decided. And Dario, mute him. You decided because that. there is. You decided that. And to you, I say thank you. And that's why I feel like all tops, I feel like all, I'm, I'm talking to my fellow power tops. Y'all need to at least, once in your lifetime, don't need to be no tops walking around here that ain't never bottomed before, okay? Because if you know what it means to sit up there and to get ready for that and then to just sit there and take that, and then a man gonna sit up here and talk about you should be buying him lunch, you should be paying for his haircut, you should be sending him flowers. That is crazy to me. And y'all yeah, need, need this clip cut out next week and put in the frame so I can post it to my social media. And on that note, we yeah. are gonna take a quick break right here on the group chat because that is hot topics for the night. Darius, thank you. George, I'm with you when you're right. But <laughs> to top and bottom, yes, top take care of your bottoms. And Travis, right. you right. Don't clock nobody else's pocket. But we'll be right back here <laughs> on the group chat. Please take it away, George. <laughs> You gotta look for the song too. I'm devastated. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Promote your business during the episodes of the group chat. Email us at info at mychasereality.com. The group chat is now on Sheen Magazine app. Head over now to see exclusive clips, bonus clips, behind the scene clips, all fun things and all things group chat right over on the Sheen Magazine app. Download it right now. What's up, everyone? It is Darius asking you to check out my newest children's book, DJ Stands on Business. Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com. Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. I don't give a fuck. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. This month, I'm not the one who went back and said it. Your friend is the one who said something. The Dallas crew is back. Marquis, the cook. Him and Ashley need to talk about how they fuck it. Now she wants to wear underwear. New story. I put so much into you and I didn't have to. I heal by going through personal things and learning my lesson. Make my money. You better stop playing with me this game. New drama. You said it was negative. That's in your head. But I'm not even on that bullshit. I'm not on the bullshit. You need to step your bars up. I think it's a little bit of jealousy. I gave you a top song. I'm just staying back. Your problem is that you think you can come into hip hop and do hip hop, but hip hop is black. That's not what I said. That's what I said. Sit back, Miss Girl. And more chase. Let's just chase what we're here to chase and do what we're here to do. Don't chase storylines. I'm mentally not in the space and it's so tired of you to choose the next time I come back to be this. That is tired. Chasing Dallas, new season premieres this March, only on Chasing Reality. <laughs> Welcome back, you guys, to the group chat. Listen, now y'all know we've been giving all the hot topics, but you know, lately it seems like we also been the hot topics all over TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, Jack Grind. We just been a hot topic everywhere. So we go talk about it. We've been seeing y'all comments again. So we're about to sound off. Okay. <laughs> This comes um, from, you know, ghetto bougie, Miss Hello World TV. I like the break from George. It's a little distracting the constarina of the other castings. I knew the antique was to be funny, but it was a bit much. George, sound off, honey. I have nothing to say. Thank you for tuning in and watching me. <laughs> <laughs> Along with my other fabulous 
uh, you know, castmates. Listen, girl, you just cannot please y'all. If it ain't fighting, it's boring. If it's too funny, it's over the top. Girl, what do you want, honey? Go somewhere and sit down and watch the heat of the night or Matlock and get the food. Bye, girl. Good night. I, I don't have the energy. I don't have, this is my first week back. I, I, I don't have the energy, but thank you for your donation. Thank you thank for getting you. us paid. Hey, thank you for your comments. We'll see you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, that's sad. Uh, what about the next one? <laughs> Travis, wrong side. Travis, wrong side. Oh, uh, they tried to. No, Travis, they try to read all of us. Sparkle shirt. That's me. You are dead wrong. It's just coming from um Mrs. or Mister. We don't know your pronoun, so we're gonna call you Fancy Reese Forty Nine Sixty Two because you look like you was born in the sixties, anyways. Um, uh, Sparkle shirt. You are dead wrong. Leather jacket in the blue background. You are absolutely right because the sound writing situation. Beyonce is not a sound writer, girl. You do your research, and she should not receive credit. Sparkle, be a fan of Bay, but right is right and wrong is wrong. I stand with Tiffany Red, and you spell the last name wrong, bitch. Let me read you off real. quick. Quick sound off. Let me tell you something. First of all, if you're gonna call me Sparkle Shirt, you need to at least know my name because my name is at the beginning of the uh, show and it's at the end and the credits throughout the thing. It says Travis Ware right here, honey. So apparently you can't read. So what I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you is you can also lick my booty after I shit without me wiping. How about that? <laughs> Baby, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a long night. <laughs> that's gonna but be get the lick, a honey. long, dreadful night, girl. That, but that honey, me. was that a wig she had on? Because that was that was a her. quick weave. She had in a quick weave. I went to the profile, honey. It's always the quick weave. I want to see her no picture. Problem. Can we blow her picture up? Y'all need to stop. That's enough. Can we her blow face her already been blown up? No, we want to get them. They listen. They want to be seen and not viewed. That's backwards, okay? So you want to be seen, so we want to view you. I would love to blow our picture up, and next week, we'll hopefully we can get back and we get our picture blew up. Because what, what blows my mind, the girls that always want to throw shade, don't have a pot to piss in or window to throw it out, they either look crazy, smell crazy, hair is crazy, eyebrows are dreadful, honey, lipstick is horrible, but they steadily come back every week to watch us. Why watch something you don't like? That's crazy to me. Crazy. Well, you are what the what the post said? You ain't got no haters. You ain't popping. Can't worry. I about guess it. not. Cause I'm gonna be here every week, and I'm gonna do my job every week. That's why they keep asking me back, girl. Okay. And pop go to Weezer. Got a Weezer. Got a pop. And what's the next one? <laughs> Travis, wrong side. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, child, they be writing thesis statements, honey. Let's see who this is from. This is from um Girl Down Podcast with A E I O N. Whatever you say your last name, cause it ain't really pop. Yeah, I feel real ironic. How some of the panelists was so. Trying to downplay Megan Thee Stallion being shot by Tory Lane. And in the very same episode, we got to discuss. Travis, hold up, bitch. Let me tell you something. Don't go to my family, huh? Don't break my situation and my family's situation. Travis, Anybody read, copy. read, read. Travis misses sister. Um, I can't read the rest because I can't see the comment. Travis misses sister. Robert, the hands of the intimate partner. How was the one able to connect the dots that black women regular or famous experience harm of the hands of the intimate partners at a disproportionate rate? Such a missed opportunity. Darius, can you sound off on that one, honey? Mm-mm. I'll sound out from that one. <laughs> There's, we are negotiating your okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I'm not going to even read Aeon down because I actually do like her, but I am going to say this. Now, at the end of the day, we all have our beliefs and what we believe in, especially when it comes to the Megan Thee Stallion case and the evidence and the evidence that's there, the facts that came out, honestly, all the facts weren't clear. But what we cannot do is put Travis' sister in the situation because at the end of the day, you know, we can't speak on the specifics of what happened to Travis' sister. We can't speak on any given specific evidence about Travis' sister. My thing is, leave. I know I know we are in, you know, on this show, but leave his family out of it and stop trying to make a point when it comes to his family because that's something that he's still dealing with. And not saying Megan Thee Stallion isn't dealing with that, but however, the facts that are presented and the things that we see and the evidence that we were given as the public, Everybody's not going to stand with it. So you can't be mad at us for giving our opinion on what we feel about her situation. Sorry. And I would say this, and I'm going to move on because we got other sound offs. Let me tell you something. Keep on bringing my sister, and I'm going to start talking about your podcast. I know you want to get your views and stuff up, and I don't know who you are. So God bless you, and welcome to the free promo on my show. Um, 
Don't bring up my you. sister where we don't know what the facts is. Or what. my sister still misses. You talking about the whole situation? It's not even a parallel to Megan the Stallion stuff. We are on a show that we give commentary to, and your comment is invalid. So that's all I'm gonna give you. And you keep that up and try them comments again. Whoever that girl is, or boy, whoever you are, I don't know, cause I don't know. You come in the comment section that again. I'm gonna personally put you on timeout for three thousand years. Don't play with me. Mm. Now we're gonna sound off. <laughs> Other way, Travis. Other way. Okay, so this is actually a good one. This is coming from Miss Juicy Jazz 2350. And she's talking about all four of us, honey. These are some messy good men. And not chasing reality. Like in the pop comment, honey. What's going on? Sound off, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead, well, Darius. I, no, I like this comment, y'all. These are some messy gay men, but I think some adjectives were missing when this person decided to add this comment. These are also some accomplished, educated, opinionated, fashionable, stylish uh successful um beautiful handsome gorgeous like girl if you're gonna start yes we are some messy gay men but th there's so many other adjectives that you should go to add it in that moment and you just missed the opportunity so the next time that you want to address this panel of people that you've tuned in to watch that you've spent an hour and a half in taking what we have to say come up with some better adjectives tell the story <laughs> Now, any final comments on the sound off, you guys, make sure you put it down in the comments below because we just sound off on your asses. <laughs> Back on yeah. to you, Joy. <laughs> All right, listen, now, I, I'm glad I didn't have to read down too bad because next time if you say something about me, I'm sending it over to George and I'm going to hate that for you. Matter of fact, I may send it to Travis because Travis, child, I was clenching my pearls a little bit mm. what you just said. Now, Travis done went to hell twice tonight. He done went to hell and came back, child. We're not sending nothing over there. Okay, not nothing. Not for him and I. <laughs> listen. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break. And listen, y'all already know, when we come back, we have George giving us the funny videos of the week. All right here on the group chat. <laughs> you better stop that. Okay, because they ain't going to beat me. My part, you know, one of the, you know, the most important part of the show. You know, I always say this every week. They give me the easy part, mm -hmm. but I make the most money. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three for y'all tonight. We're gonna start our first video. Yeah. I know I'm on your logo. Hey, I like what? What you got on your nails? What you got on your nails? A pair of nails. <laughs> Said I made. That I made. That I made. So before you come for me, boo, go check yourself. Make sure you got those edges done like But check yourself. Why are you talking to a seven year old boy? <laughs> <laughs> My girl was reading down. My girl, well, you might want you might want to make well, sure those edges are done. What's that, George? What look, am I missing? Yeah, look for it, George. What? Because that's giving in school suspension coming. <laughs> that's giving in school suspension. Her mama Ooh. was driving that car when that boy was sitting in the trunk. Get <laughs> <laughs> that's the little sister. This is giving in school suspension. This is giving you gonna be at the school oh. weekly. Yeah. I cannot stand no little grown tail little girl, little boys like these girl and little chill. It just it really grinds my gears. It just irks me because I know she's sitting up in somebody's classroom in the morning, rolling her neck at her teacher, talking about what she is and ain't going to do. Baby, with her nails on. With her nails on. I feel like it's a time and a place for everything, and I don't believe in stifling children's creativity. If she made those nails, she did an amazing job, but she should have made those for her mama or for her auntie or for her older cousin. But when you add to this, when you add to this, and you add this to that, it's just too much. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's grown. Grown. She added too grown. Yeah. yeah. You know, she was seven. Seven. Girl, yeah. take two away. She was just five, two years ago, and she has that type of. My sister's living her best life, and her edges was laid, and her nails were done. Period. Listen, oh, we may find that we living in our last days. <laughs> 
We may find that funny, but you know that it's a little funny, but at the end of the day, it's not funny. Let me have been seven years old making the video. My mama, shout out to my mama because I know she watching Sonya Irby. She would have whooped my ass, okay? She would have whooped my ass because you're acting too damn grown and you acted fast. Because yeah. you think that shit cute now, but when she get about 17, 18, she got four kids out of wedlock and she ain't got no high school diploma, it's going to be a problem. Now, Travis. Well, that used to be, that used to be me at seven, a mess, talking my crap in school, doing what I want to do, and look at me now, sitting right here on the group chat with four uh, lovely guys. With no Still name. a mess. Still a mess. <laughs> Last one got his point. This is the point that I was making earlier about socialization, and these children, like, they, this is what we see on social media. We see the fad with the the uh, nails, and we see the fad with the, the, ba the swoop baby hairs. Like, all of this is manifesting from that uh, IG influencer aesthetic and it's a shame that even a second grader is trying to buy in on it mm, yeah well moving right on along bling 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 <laughs> bitches is mad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I Did wanted it. to say that I would have wrote it I well, you said that. I said what I said <laughs> hey bitch you look fabulous you don't okay him is the only person I know that has had cancer thyroid <laughs> blood clots open heart surgery Very a good. stroke no. and is still walking around here being negative she's supposed to wear I'm straight and she, like, no, she made her bob now so while you were running your mouth with him I was running to the bank sweetie no, honey, and then I went and Trump check honey Donald Trump yeah the one you That's laugh you him rich you I was like, oh, oh, not a white refrigerator. Girl, please put your shoes on. Let's go find you a home, honey. Ooh, Lord. Cheers to the girls weekend. Cheers, Let's get it cheers. You better watch those B words, cheers. Mary. You better watch those cheers. or you end up over in the ocean. Cheers. Y'all, yeah. <laughs> listen, that was good TV. Okay, wait, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. This is so funny to me because, oh, no, you know, I'm not going to say that because she might watch this, but girl, just know. I be talking about somebody and every time I see her bob, I be like, <laughs> cause that bob be like, it, don't, it ain't candy bob, it ain't flowy, it is. You gotta add the sound to that, Dario. <laughs> oh my God. That's gonna now be a love word to shut up and we need to move on. I, I, I love, love you. I, okay, yeah. Tighten it up. Tighten when I say, when I say, let me tighten up. All right. All right, moving <laughs> on. We got, we got one more. Get two McDoubles, no pickle, no onion. No onion. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you fried gay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can I get two McDoubles, no pickle, no onion. No onion. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you fried gay. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, can I get two McDoubles, no pickle, no onion? No onion. No onion. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> and the laugh at the end sound like trash. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't care what nobody say. My first job was oh. working at McDonald's, and working in that drive through was the most fun job I have oh my had God. in my life. Have y'all ever worked at? In fast food, I'm yeah, I worked at Burger King. I, I would not I worked at Zaxby's. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, that Burger was King, Zaxby's. What you said, George? I've never worked in fast food. Oh. So he thinks he is higher than all of us. That's oh, you better than us. Hey, better. Right, so you better than us. No, 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 okay. no, no. That's not what I said at all. <laughs> if I don't want to work in fast food, I don't want to work in fast food. What's wrong with that? What was your first job? My first job was at Regions Bank as a teller. Okay, well, my first job was at Zaxby's <laughs> when I was in high school been, in the drive-thru. <laughs> I've literally been in banking a very long time. <laughs> hmm. I started very early, so sorry. I mean, it just wasn't... No, you know what? Hold on. Let me take that back. Let me back up. My first job, I worked part-time at a, like, a luxury store. I was a cashier, and so I would get off. I would get out of school at, like, 12 or 1. And then I would go to work. Well, I worked there throughout high school, throughout my senior year, and my boss started trusting me, so he started sending me to the bank to make deposits, right? And so one day I went into the bank, and I didn't know their positions, but she was a branch manager, and she was like, you're always in here. Would you be interested in being a teller? And I was like, sure. She gave me a paper application. I filled it out. She called me the next day, and she hired me. So I've only 
That's how so while we were, basically while we was running around dropping French fries, he was running to the bank. Okay, cash it, check. Uh, hold it, hold it, hold it. I ain't never had dropped no French fries. I was oh, eating no, the French fries because I was in the drive-through taking the order. And sometimes Zaxby's, I'm sorry, but I'm telling y'all the truth. What happened when they would order their food, and I pretend like everybody had no lunch money with me because I can't get no hundred dollars that day. I would tell them, hey, send me a chicken finger plate. They forgot it. And that would be my lunch. And I would eat that chicken finger plate. Don't act like you oh, ain't never been in drive through and took cookies home and fries and chicken. Well, and one thing about me, I ain't never lied about uh, uh, that I was hungry. If I was hungry and I wanted some of those fries, once I dropped some fries, I'm going to blow, scoop them in a little thing, put them in a little bag, buy the register. Well, I did. I did. Mm -hmm. I, I would have loved to work in, in fast food. I think it would have been really fun. I probably would get you, everything. You would have so you hated it, food. George. You would have hated it. Definitely. Yeah, you would have hated it. They would have fired I, George. His mouth. George, George, you know you like your customers to have their eyes closed. I would have been a team. Wait, what you mean? <laughs> <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> he don't need no rebuttals, but he runs. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. You gonna talk to me? You know what? It's been really nice working with y'all. But between the comments and me getting red and saying I'm doing too much, and then I have to sit on this panel and defend my character with, with people I call co-hosts and friends. I am hurt to say the least. And I will be submit. You know, I have no problem giving a resignation. I will be submitting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll leave a job, baby, and don't have another. I will be submitting my effective next month. No, yeah. Very I good. I want to do this so I can get you know, what's due to me. <laughs> I will be Very good. <laughs> Oh, anyway, listen, guys, as always, they like to double team me. That was my, but see, when it's on them and it's their, you know, their uh, section to cover or their part, you know, I respect it. I show up. Then they get to me and they want to disrespect me. It happens every week. Anyway, Troy, back to you, because there's going to be some changes coming next week. And I think we should start with a no drinking policy. Okay. <laughs> and as you start with you, because you come on here every week drunk. <laughs> Oh my this, god, baby! I just come on here and entertain. This is straight water. You know, I'm a too. I had water too. I think mm -hmm. those syllables you've been saying this uh, night have disagreed with that statement. Oh, oh! <laughs> now, well, <laughs> before we all uh, have an HR case on our hands, I'm gonna go ahead and close out this show. Now, listen, guys. Thank you so much for tuning <laughs> in with us tonight on the group chat. Listen, George is over there in his red cup. Darius got his glass. Travis, I don't know what Travis drinking out of. And baby, I got the clear cup. But however, we enjoyed the show tonight. I enjoyed you guys. I hope you are enjoying us. Keep signing off in the comments. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know what you're thinking. <laughs> Look at me with a drunk hey. Let us know what you're thinking. <laughs> and make sure you are constantly commenting, liking, and subscribing mm -hmm. to the Chase of Reality YouTube channel. Listen, this is the group chat, and we thank you so much for tuning in each and every week. Travis, George, Darius, love you guys. It's the group chat. Yes, beautiful, George. And keep the comments coming so we can have some more. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Who's that coming? Bye. Bye. <laughs>